Hey, hey. Good evening out there, or good afternoon out there, or wherever you're at. Yeah. Um, this is uh, Greg Voria, a.k.a. Social Greg, and you are? Adolfo Ferranda, at Nerdstalker. Hello, everyone. You've been a busy man this week. What's going on? I, I saw that little tweet from you on Friday night while I was at a uh, going-away party that you're on a uh, panel. Uh, tell us all about that. Yeah, so the panel was about, uh, let's see, what was it? The Future of Online Video. And uh, some of my fellow uh, panelists here were, uh, let's see, there was Hermione Way from, uh, from The Next Web. Carlos Rodella was a host. Uh, he's an ex mevio guy. Uh, Tara Long from The Destructoid Show and Revision 3. Uh, Murray Newlands was a host. He's a social media guy. And uh, John Davison from, uh, you know, CBS Interactive, I believe, and GameSpot.com. Uh, it was really interesting. It was a good discussion. You know, I'm sure, uh, you know, I walked away from it with a lot of, uh, you know, things uh, I was thinking about, uh, because a lot of the questions mm. that I didn't answer because I was so damn quiet and they moved on to the next questions after, after I thought of an answer too quickly because I'm, I'm slow in the head like that. It's um, a quiet strength you have, my friend. <laughs> yes. That's what, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I told him once, I'm like, I'm just deep in thought. No. Um, so the impact of things like, you know, Xbox media center now, you know, there's a lot of M Xboxes in a lot of people's living rooms, you know, and the uh, media center has been iterating and improving the experience. But unfortunately, mm. you know, mm. it seems like in my opinion that most people don't even know a media center exists. What is media center, mm. you know, for the normal average person, uh, will the new YouTube, uh, new UI help out at all, you know, with this sort of lean I back see. sort of yeah. view, uh, will the rumored Apple television have an impact, um, business model. Did they, talk, did, did they talk about the Roku at all? Stuff like that? Or yeah, yeah. So Roku ancillary devices. Yeah, things like that. Like the Apple TV, not television, but the TV also. Yeah, Roku, any sort of additional, mm. you know, a boxy kind of thing. They didn't speak about yeah. those specifically too much as so much as, the, you know, calling it sort of generically a device. What I told them, um, so how I address things like the Xbox Media Center and the rumored Apple television, I said, for the short term, it seems like it's going to be your... The, the solution right now will be cable box in conjunction with device, something that works side by side sort of seamlessly, you know what I mean? So you don't have mm, to be mm. switching or something weird like that, you know, from TV slash uh, whatever DVR to X, right. some box, right, or something like that, you know, for an experience well, to watch. Well, you know, on CNET Tech Week this week, they did talk about the video and mm. stuff like that, or mm. TV and, and stuff. And one thing they brought up was is that you're right. I, I don't think right now you could live without both because technically the cable has sports and news, yeah. Yeah. which A you really cool can't get much of on right. the other type of boxes, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you, know, you know, I I'm one of those, you know – cord cutters myself and i love it you know my justification being is you know but but we're more sort of you know bleeding edge kind of obviously nerd types but true um true for me it's like the return on investment is just so bad on on your just traditional cable right now right you're paying yeah. some people on average 80 to 100 bucks a month you know for just a boatload of commercials and very little pro quality programming despite all these right. you know all these channels sure you can get the option to add on things like hbo and showtime and things like that but it's again it's an add-on right on top of all this you know that you're paying already so i mean it's just a bad return it seems like but you're right unfortunately i found myself last night looking for a strike force fight right for i'm like a ufc fan right <laughs> i, saw I, had, I had nowhere to watch it you know i'm like who has showtime finally someone came through at the last minute but yeah. but you know i i shouldn't have to do that you know but um but I, and I love watching uh, television through the internet. It's just, uh, you know, things like also like what we're doing, you know, what's the business model go forward for people that are, you know, creating video or even medium sized companies, I would call medium sized, like a revision right. three okay. or, or a media, you know, what they're doing. Uh, my answer to that was in the short term, I don't really see, um, a good business model for, for small content creators like this. I mean, we do this cause it's a passion for us, right? And we love to do this and it's a right, lot of fun, right. but I told them also, yeah. you know, you know, I tried advertising and it was, it was very little return really for the time that I was doing, you know, I just keep my day job, right. do, keep consistent right. with this and just give it away to everyone. Cause it's a lot of fun, you know? Um, now is that sustainable long term? I don't know. You know, I look at us as the tortoise in the marathon race, you know, as opposed to like right. trying to get there immediately, whatever. So, um, business model, I, maybe it'll move towards the more traditional sort of television model, or maybe TV will eventually just take over the whole online medium, yeah. right? You know, which is sort of what I'm suspecting. But, um, you know, because there's all different quality of production and things like mm -hmm. that, you know, that mm -hmm. we're doing, you know. Yeah. 
And then uh, there was also things like, how do you work with brands without looking like you're uh, pandering to, to them or selling out, you know? Uh, so what if our show suddenly gets sponsored by, you know, Advil or something like that, and we're wearing, like, Advil hats and sweatshirts and say, hmm, that Advil, oh, God, my head hurts oh, right oh, now, oh, you know? <laughs> Little yellow, different, you know, Wayne's World kind of thing or something, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, that's a that's well, a tough I, line I think any anyone has to, you know, toe. Well, I, I, and I think I've read several... Um, uh, comparison statistics that obviously online ads uh pay off far less than um tv ads do right mm -hmm. and so the the switch over to business model has to be somewhere where in the middle right i don't think you could pay the tv prices anymore but at the same time you know we're not half of us aren't paying for any kind of content it's free yeah so you know you know those type of things have to come up um so yeah I, I i would argue too I though it's hard to measure um it's easier to measure i think conversion rates of online ads you know with clicks actual clicks as mm. opposed to eyeballs mm. on on television or something even, sure. even online sure. eyeballs or something like that too um or, mm. or think about how, how do you measure newspaper ads right i mean it, you know there's no no good thing so it's that that industry is still it's pretty it's you know it's kind of bad in the sense where it's not giving a lot back to your client or you know like actual metrics it's sort of like general sort right, of like metrics right. it's not there's no yeah, real exact yeah. one for one i think the only area that you could see is is in in transactional yeah. uh, pursuits yeah. where you're doing a coupon or something right. like that right like, you could yeah. count the coupons that come right. in something right. like that but you still can't measure now with tv you have nielsen so you know that's been on for many years so yeah everyone felt the um you know, when they're debating this topic, they felt that, you know, since traditional TV has been, you know, what, 40, 50 years or whatever you mm -hmm. call it, you know, have been practicing about how to measure all these things, you know, they're down, but this online stuff is still in its infancy. So I agree mm -hmm. with you. I think yeah. it, it, we're way, uh, way early here. <laughs> yeah, way early, way early. So it was a fun discussion. Yeah. You know, I walked away from it, you know, with a lot of thoughts. I'll probably do a blog on it at some point, write something up yeah, on that. Yeah, you should. So the next story, I saw a tweet from you as Louis C.K. disrupts uh, the world. It looks like. Yeah, uh, man. So there's this, there? yeah, there's this uh, popular uh, blog called A VC by a uh, popular blogger whose name escapes me right now from New York. Oh, God, I forget his name. But um, yeah, so as some of you know, uh, Lucy K has uh, created a uh, one hour show online he did from several different uh, uh, um, shows. Um, for download and streaming for five bucks and what the what the vc says here is he says uh, you know this is another example of how creativity he think you know his theory is will be rewarded in the uh, internet age and he gives examples mm -hmm. of some of the companies that he's you know funded also like etsy and soundcloud and kickstarter um and the thing that lewis what he said too was that it was a uh, you know, typically they would do something like a, it was a high production actual thing. So this costed him like $150,000 out of pocket, essentially. Yeah, it was right? expensive. I saw, he was pretty open with his, uh, yeah, with his yeah, finances. I was yeah, finances. impressed with that. A lot of it too. Yeah. So he covered it by two, doing two shows and the ticket sales of both shows, um, you know, so he's eating it essentially for, you know, these two shows that he does to, to fund this sort of thing. And that didn't even include some of the things like a, a website also, which was another $30,000 to create and stuff yeah, like that. Right, right, um, right. But yeah, it took him uh, months also to put the video together. So there's a lot of time also okay. from several shows to do this. Right. Uh, if he'd okay. done it, he said, you know, if he'd done it with a large company, they would have given him a large guarantee and, uh, you know, but, but then he would have to sh uh, share the ownership and, and of course it'd be less risk as well. And there'd be uh, limitations also right um so in sure. a it turns out in a couple days they did a half million dollars in sales like he just let this thing oh, go as an right. experience and kabam, crazy. you know just crazy and that's not even and there's been a good time span from then to now so god knows you know how much more he's made since then you know uh, so no, this, I mean, this way, what he's saying is that instead of charging the customer 20 bucks he can charge five bucks and he owns right, the licensing right. and everything outright but you were saying greg right no, I, I think I, I was going to add that, you know, for five bucks, if you think about it, right, um, uh, if it's something I don't want to really buy and save that I want to watch over and over again, I, I think five bucks is, is, is a good pain point for me. I mean, it, it's half of what you'd see in a movie, but if I just want to see it once and not have it on my shelf or not have put it, be able to put it in my DVD player or whatever or save it on my hard drive, it's pretty good. Yeah. I, I think I, I think that's a good approach, right? I mean, that's 
that's something that uh, as a consumer I would go do. I yeah. think it's um, really great too because there's no DRM or anything. So he's saying, you know, he's essentially he isn't trusting you, saying, hey, you know, it'd be great if each of you bought this for five bucks. But in reality, you right. could forward this to your friends. You could put it on BitTorrent. You could do all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, all kinds of things that that are not well, so cool. It, it's the it's the it's the old uh, '90s shareware thing, right? Mm. If you trust me, you know, just pay me a little bit. Trust me, and you could do whatever you want after that. Yeah. You know, so, so what the VC says know. is that this is an example of you know not only a financial success but also a success of of this this business model, right? Uh, right. So there's no right. need to mess with the architecture of the web, you know, in this old way of doing business to protect, you know, uh, pirate or anything like right. that, like the ludicrousy of SOPA and what they're about to pass, right? Um, yeah, yeah. And just go directly to your fans, you know, just direct. Yeah. You know, I'm going to sell you stuff, but um, I, that probably has larger sort of production companies shivering in their boots, you know? Well, you know, I mean, the argument on the other side, when, when after you sent me that tweet, I did some research on it as well. It's just, you know, they're talking about some jobs, stuff like that, but... You know, I think in this day and age, um, they have to change that model. Uh, my cousin worked for a, a company that kind of was the middleman, kind of like we're talking about here, where they would actually uh, go to the actual production companies, digitize it, and then license it and encode it back to, you know, people like uh, the iTunes store, you know, Amazon, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it, and actually – you know, as as these these companies are getting smarter, they're saying, you know, do we really need this? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so the, because in the old model, right, you had a distributor for hard goods like you know CDs, uh, right, you right, know, the vinyl days, right, right. right, and and you know you you know these production companies never really worked with the consumer in a B to C model. It was kind of a B to B because they would then sell it to these distributors who would then mark it up and then sell it again to the record stores or yeah. CD stores or whatever you want to call it, right? And now, you know, you, we're moving away from that. Um, you know, maybe not fast enough for a lot of people, but we are moving away from yeah. that. So, you know, let's um, fa let's face it. Uh, I, you know, Apple saved the music industry, right? I mean, for that, it was all, sure. it was going the Napster route sure. and there was no stopping it back sure. then. And um, yeah. look at look at the print medium, you know, in terms of jobs, look at what's happening mm. to newspapers and things like that. You know, I just think mm. it's an unfortunate and it really is. It's a, it's a travesty that that people are losing their jobs. But it's a strange evolution at the same time of what's of what's happening, too. I, I would advise people to go check out. There's a great movie on uh, Netflix streaming right now called um, Page One. It's about The New York Times and sort of the transition yeah, they're nice. going through and the challenges they're going through. And it's sort of arguments about, um, you know, basically you know people sharing their content and the value mm -hmm. of writers mm -hmm. um and having to shrink staff and the impact on that and look yeah. what's happened to different newspapers but anyways Probably. yeah it's this is a, a fascinating experiment that uh, louis ck did next story what do we got here uh did iran hack us drone gps weak <laughs> link yeah so you know um as you know, the United Nations last month issued a report, you know, about the beginning of November that Iran might be actively working on a nuclear weapon program, right? Hmm. And, you know, we've been hearing that rumor for years, right? But, you know, when the United Nations issues a report, usually it's a precursor to, uh, you know, asking all the governing um, countries for sanctions against Iran, right? right? It's usually the precursor. So so I, I know what's happening is that, you know, and you're hearing all these things in the ba in the background where we're sending in these drones trying to, you know, spy on Iran, trying to figure out where their, um, you know, their, their buildings are. I think even 60 Minutes had something on it last week about, you know, showing, you know, how the drones kind of work, right? Mm. Well, um, Christian Science Monitor uh, ran an interview of supposedly Iranian engineer who had basically hacked the drone. Wow. So what what he had said is that the the GPS navigation is the weakest point. Uh, uh, the, the Iranian engineer wow. told the monitor, and I don't know how they got a hold of this guy. So the Achilles I'm, heel, I'm clueless huh? about that. Yeah, and giving the most detailed description of the Polish of Iran's electronic ambush of the highly classified U.S. drone. 
by putting noise on the communications, you force the bird into autopilot. This is really kind of funny. Yeah. It's almost kind of like he's telling you the hacking directions. Mm. This is where the bird loses its brain. And and so what happens is then that that's what they could do is actually then take it over. <laughs> and oh, so because there was a lot of speculation after that, they were saying, is that drone really real? Because if it really crashed, how, where's the damage, mm, right? Mm, so now this kind of collaborates that, right, mm. where it says, well, we took it over. We landed it safely <laughs> back on our base oh, in man. Iran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, wow. Uh, you know, we decided to start, you know, tearing it apart and see what we could learn out of it, wow, right? So wow. there's all these stories going on now from, you know, well, the Washington Post is basically, you know, pro, pro-U.S. pro government, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're saying, oh, no, no, you know, they can't get anything out of it, oh, you wow. know, we've disabled all that stuff, and, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, oh. Wow. It's just a big mess, but I think I, I think the 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 moral of the the the, the guts of the story is is that you know if someone really did hack these things, which you know yeah. is possible. Yeah, and GPS know, is the weak link. They're gonna have to <laughs> do a lot. Yeah, you know. In fact, I, I think even in the New York Times article that I researched on another backstory to this is that. Um, they actually said that two months ago at a security conference, there was a research paper presented um, that uh, expanded on the GPS spoofing thing, they're calling this, describing like seamless takeover of drones and other airborne vehicles using hacking. Wow. Last week we talked wow. at Zenga and Jive were going IPO. And Big I think IPO. On, what, Friday, Thursday, they went IPO? Yeah, the last ones Friday? of the year, right? Yeah, so the window closed. Yeah. Wow. So the window so, closed for IPO. So what happened was uh, Zenga like snuck in there. There's right under the gun. And, uh, you know, as it turns mm-hmm. out, uh, there was a lo- really lofty expectations by analysts and stuff, you know, and uh, they hit sure. at uh, the announced price at $10. And uh, right. they ended up like sort of going down and then sort of hitting up like to eleven twenty five, I think, for a while. And then going down again. Um, so they closed at $9.50, down 5%. So uh, as okay. the, uh, what is it, SF Examiner, I believe, or some said, uh, it's hardly the big pop that some analysts had predicted. And so far, the reactions is <laughs> nowhere near the wild reception given to professional social network LinkedIn earlier this year when its stock price right. more than doubled at the opening bell. Uh, Zango's IPO, right. the biggest uh, tech IPO since Google went public in 2004, raised $1 billion through the sale of uh, on 100 million shares. So not too shabby, but um, also disappointing, oddly disappointing at the same time. Well, I think there's a couple things that uh, people are a little bit... Um, shaky about zynga right they're they're heavily tied to facebook All right so you know i think you know a lot of people feel mm, is that a good horse to ride probably mm. is but mm. you know they want them probably to diversify a little bit more maybe with some of this money they can now but um divide, diversify into what that's i think that's the next yeah. debate that they have to kind of go through in the market mm. um you know, there's a lot of players coming into the uh, social gaming market. They're not alone. You know, you have EA. No, oh, absolutely. Um, you with the yeah. Sims, right? Yeah. And then you have all these other companies just nipping sent at their tweet heels. out that said, "Should computer science be a K through 12 requirement?" I thought right. that was such a great question. Yeah, it's really neat. This one came from uh, Hack Education. They actually, and and another mm-hmm. site also. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, why why the absence of computer science is the question from elementary and secondary schools. You know, is the big thing. So mm-hmm. you know, sure. recent articles point to a few obstacles to, to teaching computer science. So questions about teacher certification. There's debates apparently in the school mm-hmm. about uh, what a cr- computer science career curriculum should contain and the concerns about where computer science fits in the curriculum and or the schedule. Uh, is it math? Is it science? Does it replace any other course? Uh, so studies, of course, have shown that uh, exposure to science, tech, and engineering and math, otherwise known as STEM uh, subjects, yeah, yeah. is important in convincing students t- uh, to think about STEM careers. So early this year, Microsoft surveyed some 500 college students uh, pursuing these STEM degrees, and nearly four out of five of them said that they had made the decision to be a STEM major in high school or earlier. Uh, So one in five. um, So so what they point to also are the studies pointed to the influence of particular teachers or a particular class as sparking their interest. Notably, uh, almost 70% of girls said that this was what made them decide to study STEM versus just 51% of boys, which is a very interesting uh, statistic there. Uh, But just one in five of these college students said that uh, their K-12 education helped prepare them extremely well for the college courses. Um, there are plenty of opportunities for students to take biology uh, before stepping 
into a biology 101 class in college, but very few for computer science. Um, so it's, you know, it's a fascinating topic and, and these uh, pain points and concerns by the educational system, you know, are, are, are valid well, also. But, you know, it's, I hear this debate all the time because I do a lot of volunteer activity at uh, Cal Poly, mm -hmm. uh, San Luis Obispo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the concern, if you hear about it, is is that they have this traditional kind of teaching methodology. You know, you got to take math, you got to take English. Mm -hmm. The question is, should this be supplemental or replace something that's in the traditional curriculum right now? Mm -hmm. Because technically, the the state of California and I think this is true for other states mm -hmm. only pays uh, teachers for a certain amount of work hours during mm -hmm. the week, mm -hmm. which then translates to class hours. Huh. And so all this stuff has a big ramification if we add that curriculum in. At least that's the argument I hear now. Mm -hmm. I think there's a way you could do it. It's just someone has to make an effort to do this. Yeah. But it, it, that's the argument I hear. So it's this kind of. Um, Borg-like machine yeah, that yeah. can't be broke, can't yeah. be broken into yeah. almost, right? Yeah, it's a because very they tough... come up with an argument. Oh well, you know, I'm only paid for 45 teaching hours, and you know, right. you're going to add four more hours, make it 50, right? And, right, sure. And it's so different than the work world you or I are in. Right, right. right. We just get the job done. Right? Right, right. If it takes 40, great. If it takes 50, well, right. okay, sorry, but it does, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that whole other world works much different yeah, than you or yeah, I, yeah, and, man. Yeah. 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 So, but I thought that was great. I, I had a lot of people tweet about that, um, giving their opinion to me on, on my uh, social great channel. Oh, so fascinating. Kinda like, I'm kidding. Yeah. I, 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 people are thinking about this because I think, you know, also, is, 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 you know, a lot of people are debating, I hear sometimes, is computer science um, a STEM? You yeah. know, and I thought that was BS. I, I'm not going to say what, the, yeah, but it's just, I, I think. It is, considering the world we live in today, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who are going outside of majors like English, business, into computer science because, you know, that's really what's happening around the world we're, we're in, right, with all these these apps that are being developed and everything else. So yeah. um, I think why not get the kids involved early and, you know, then they could have a really great Disney experience <laughs> on Disney Online. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of uh, students and students, often these students are entrepreneurs as well. So what we're talking about next mm. is um, Startup Incubator takes to the seas with wild ideas to house foreign entrepreneurs. Tell us more about this. Greg. Oh, yeah. That, that was a great story I, I picked up from John Cook of GeekWire. Um, so basically... Um, it's a wild concept, right? But the latest idea coming out of some buzz in, in the Silicon Valley is, uh, you know, not not to mention cash from Peter Thiel, uh, goes a little bit deep in uh, deep in, and uh, basically an organization named uh, Blue Sea Co Company is proposing a visa-free offshore incubator housed in an innova uh, renovated cruise ship or barge. 12 miles oh, off the shores yeah, of San Francisco. Right. So right. basically, <laughs> they're right outside of the it's boundary <laughs> for, for California, Brilliant. right? So this whole visa issue, you know, I, I'm sure everyone has heard about it. You know, there, there's these, uh, you know, entrepreneurs who are foreign uh, coming to the United States, starting, you know, companies that are generating millions and millions mm. of dollars in revenue back into the United States. You know, they're basically told, well, sorry, you, you know, you, you can't stay here anymore. You have to go home. Right. So, right. Um, yeah, you know, and they may be in their middle of their visa process, but they're, you know, their, their, their time has run out yeah. or, you know, other things like that. But it, it, it's kind of a neat concept because it's saying, okay, well, we're, we're going to stand near the line, but not on the line and not on the other side of the line, but we're going to put, you know, a bunch of you entrepreneurs who, who have visa problems onto this ship yeah. and you guys can just hack away do whatever you want, create apps, and you know, we'll give you the environment to do that. And, you know, the you angel know, investor Peter Thiel saying, yeah, okay, let's let's do it, man. You loophole, know? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, don't you think, like, you know? the, uh, you know, the proponents for, you know, the value of these H-1B workers have done, have failed right. miserably at uh, promoting... Uh, that cause, right? I mean, obviously, things like back in the day in the '80s or whatever of like the you know yes. the fear of ja Japanese car manufacturers, right, stealing oh, yeah. American jobs, right. right? Was a big was one of the reasons, uh, you know, where everyone just like you know became very nationalist, right? 
And then also, uh, you know, Osama bin Laden didn't help any either, right? Uh, with uh, we need to lock down our borders or these, you know, immigration type of, you know, we see uh, mm. all these videos of people trying to get in from the border of Mexico, right, and things like that. Right. But the other side right. has been largely very silent, you know, on its its huge value in uh, in these uh, these you know these H one B you know these people holding these H-1Bs coming in here, you know, being entrepreneurs, being critical uh, parts of these companies, you know, engineering and otherwise, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, th that whole thing, as, as everyone knows, or maybe doesn't know, it's really broken. You know, we're talking about a system that was created years ago that doesn't really reflect the current age and times of what we're, we're into right now. Mm. So what you have is a bunch of people, who do want to stay in the United States? So mm -hmm. I mean, you know, let's 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 be clear about that. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not forcing them to stay here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They want to stay here. Oh, they felt the go. opportunity, yeah. especially around the Silicon Valley, SF Tech, mm -hmm. is is the right environment for them to grow their business, start their business, or be a part of it. So you know, they they want to be here and they want to contribute back. But we're almost saying to them, well, no, 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 you know, sorry, I know you're putting money into the economy of the United. United States, but uh, sorry, the rules are the rules, and you have to go back home. And we're so. going to create a Dr. <laughs> Evil layer in the middle of the ocean, right? And uh, exactly. you could come and <laughs> live on our cruise ship. What the hell? Yeah, it's true. That's, <laughs> that's when you know no, something's not good. right, right? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, and you know we, you know, you know where Dr. Evil left. <laughs> no, I <that> went. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I, I think that. Um, you know, I, I I I have a lot of friends from Japan, obviously, and and I have uh, worked with a lot of people who are in the middle of their process for H one B, and and you were you know they're 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 stressed out because you know yeah the system doesn't tell you when anything is in the pipeline. It's mm -hmm. basically it's kind of like uh, you're mailing a, a letter in a mailbox. Right, right. You're just hoping. It reaches the other destination, and so if there's some trust <laughs> that you have that when you put the letter in, it comes out the other side, right? Yeah. That's that, that's what the visa process is, from what people tell me. You know, I, I was born here, and you were born here too, so we don't really have a great appreciation of that. But mm -hmm. all the stories I hear, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like, oh, I'm sorry, we we don't have any place to check, and mm -hmm. you know, we're just hoping, you know, that paperwork will come through by the end of the year, and. <laughs> You know, it, it's just a whacked out system. Yeah. You know, they 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 just got to go fix that thing. Right. You know, so so speaking of uh, whacked out systems, it's tip time. <laughs> yeah, dude, tip time, tip dude, time, tip time. <laughs> tip time, tip time. So Greg's uh, tip. What's your uh, tip of the week here, Greg? Well, we're still Christmas shopping, and I know those late shoppers, and yes. I'm kind of one of them. You know, so yes. um, you know, we we got a uh, we we got. I got two tips actually. Uh, one is from um, Geek Mom. Um, I thought that was really good. Uh, Ruth uh, Sule, Sule from uh, Geek Mom. You know, she's claiming that okay, does Amazon really have the lowest price, right? I think when we look at that, you know, they they have this little crossed out number that says, oh, mm -hmm. here's the Amazon price, right? right, and, right. and we're all kind of like, oh, we're excited because we saved 25%. Yeah. She's saying, well, whoa, 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 whoa. Let, let's stop and think about this. You know, does Amazon really have a good deal? Hmm. So she listed um, three, uh, three uh, uh, alternative sites, including um, Amazon Price Check, actually, wow. um, to actually look for the best deal on the web just to make sure that you are spending your money wisely um, in this season. Now, you know, we're a little late now. Interesting. Um, you'll have to, you know, accelerate the uh, delivery times now huh. of being a week away from um, – Christmas right. as of today, right? It's the 18th. So um, she gave us um, or gave you three sites you could look up to, you know, do some comparison shopping and uh, price checking. And some of it has real time price checking, so you could look day to day and you could see how everything is trending Very and everything cool. like that. So I, I thought that was cool. And then secondly, um, I, we mentioned CNET earlier. They have a great video I want you guys to check out. Um, so they just released the kind of like tech 2011 um, 
you know, must haves and, and, and check it out on their site. We'll put the link in there, but they had a really good video. They really do a really fantastic job with, you know, going over different parts of tech. They were talking about TV earlier, kind of like we were doing with, with Roku Excellent. and, you know, some of their recommendations to that. So I, I highly recommend that even if it, you know, you're not shopping for a Christmas gift, it'll actually get you up to speed quickly on the current tech that's out there. So you could actually, um, you know, even, even further learn about you know some of these new new gadgets and gizmos that are coming out there. So very cool. So and and and, and uh, I saw saw your tweets on the tip. I I like that hashtag tip. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so um, <laughs> I need uh, that. Santa's got a a Google phone number or something. Yeah, <laughs> man. So okay, my tips. Yeah, I also have two tips. I actually had three. I had to whittle it down to two. They're so good. I just had to, but I can't oh. just take up all the time. Um. So yeah, yes. and they're both from Google, oddly enough, and I had to keep them in. So one is uh, Google launches an Android training for aspiring developer site oh, uh, kind great, of thing. So great, this great, is right. great. So Dustin from uh from uh Dustin Early from Android and me announced uh by Retro Mirror, uh, Android Developer Relations Tech Lead. Android Training is a collection of free virtual classes aimed at helping developers with a wide variety of problems and, nice. and questions. Classes range from designing for multiple screens to monetizing your app with a little bit of everything in between. Uh, Mir has promised that uh, more from Android Training is on the way, and uh, but for now, there's more than enough to keep even the seasoned developer occupied for a while. Uh, to see all the different classes Android training offers, just head over to the Android uh, developer's website and uh, you will get that nice. all good stuff for free. So nice. for all you uh, you know, Christmas lovers out there, Santa lovers out there, I should say, um, <laughs> there is uh, Google also uh, created a site, uh, Ho Ho Ho, Hold the Phone, Santa's on the Line. Uh, you can call Santa now. Also, he has his own Google voice number, so you can call and leave a message. Or you could do something really cool and go to the site that they've created where you can enter in a bunch of information and have Santa call someone, you know, a little a loved one or, or uh, a little someone that you love also, you know. I had, nice. him, I had him call my uh, daughter earlier today, man, and I got to get that video footage because it, it's it was fantastic. She's like, uh, oh, oh yeah, cool. Santa, what? Oh, somewhere. okay, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks. And she's like, just cheesing, and loving it, you know. And then Santa saying, yeah. you know, "Hey, <laughs> enter name here, right? Greg, you've been a good boy. You're gonna get your." It was just fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah, I highly advise uh, all you guys to check it out. And thanks to Google for uh, setting both those things up. That oh, was just, it was just that, awesome. That, that is so cool. Maybe when I'm having a hard day at work this week, I'll call Santa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to remind you, you can contribute to the show. Just use the hashtag. NRD STK is one one of the many uh, avenues you can take, and also check us out at nerdstalker.com, or the, you know everything's also there. And you can go, please go to iTunes and sign up, uh, subscribe for our audio or uh, our video podcast, and, and give us a rating there. We'd really appreciate it; it helps us out. And uh, go to YouTube, our channel, and uh, do a search for Nerd Stalker TV, all one word, Nerd Stalker TV, and you'll see a bunch of the videos nice. there. Um, nice. So I am Adolfo Ferranda at Nerd Stalker. You can email me at Adolfo at nerdstalker.com. How about you, Greg? Uh, I'm Greg Valoria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter, and you can email me at socialgregsf at gmail.com. And, okay, I was supposed to do a shout-out to three friends who left for Japan this week. Um, interesting <laughs> enough, they were here on assignment for a big Japanese company. Now they head back, and they're all sad, but yeah. I told them I'll give you a shout on this podcast. You know, Three more fans. Uh, uh, yeah, we got we'll put them on the boat. Japan. We'll and, put them on the boat yeah, right here, out here I, with I, all the I, other H1B bo- workers. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, first one's AJ, yeah, EG, <laughs> I always get his name wrong, uh-huh. um, Yaena, and Hiroko Nozawa. She's, she's doing a great job, and she's helping me out in a lot of stuff. So I want to give a shout-out to those people. Thank you. All right. And in case you're wondering, my shirt says, This Machine Kills Fascists. It's a typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Nice shirt, man. <laughs> nice shirt. Okay, bro. We'll catch you after Christmas. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. All right. Take care. Happy holidays. Be careful out there. See you. Nerd Stalker podcast, Tech, Tech Week podcast. Yeah.